Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another full day of eating. I'm Derek from Sinet Nutrition and I'm excited to share some awesome recipes with you guys today. So if you're already subscribed to the channel, you know the deal by now with these videos. But if you're new here, what I like to do with these full day of eatings is share the plant-based recipes that I make. So my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner, and then any snacks in between in the hopes that it'll give you guys some ideas on things that you can make at home on your own. So you know, I like to keep my meals pretty simple, pretty quick and easy using relatively commonly found ingredients. And I try and keep it mostly whole foods, but not entirely, you know, I gotta keep it somewhat balanced. <laughs> And I'll also throw in some other clips and activities of things that we do throughout the day to kind of keep it interesting and then put everything into perspective. So I'm actually already part way through the day. I just got back from like my workout and doing a little bit of a grocery shop, but uh, let me catch you guys up to speed on everything that I've done today because it has been exciting. No, it hasn't really been. I uh, started out with just, you know, some kitty cuddles. Always like to have some of those in the morning just to get me, you know, happy and in the right headspace. And then I did some foam rolling and I have had this knot in my back lately. so. I I was trying to work that out and it is almost like too painful to work out. I don't know if you guys have ever had anything like that, but man, it is so painful. And I started doing face pulls. I think maybe it's because of that, but yeah, I started out with the foam roller and then I moved to like the lacrosse ball. Oh my gosh, if you guys have never tried this, if you have a knot in your back, definitely try it because it gets right in there. And then I also have my beetroot crystals. You guys, if you saw the video last week, you'll know why I'm consuming those, but it's a great little pre-workout. And I've actually been mixing them with the EAAs, the essential amino acids from Vivo Life lately. Uh, and I've been absolutely loving it before my workouts. It gives me like good strength and energy throughout my workouts, keeps me going. And uh, yeah, just love it. So we went to the gym and Crystal and I had a great workout. It's always great when our workouts you know, when we work out at the same time together, because it's always fun having a workout partner there. She actually spotted me today and helped me with some heavier lifts, so that was really nice. And uh, yeah, it's just so great seeing her make all this progress and you know, getting to watch it all happen. It's pretty cool. And then after that, we went to the grocery store because I had to pick up a few things. I actually needed like bananas and kale. That's like the bread and butter of this household. <laughs> But the bananas are actually pretty green, but I do have a couple that are ripe for the post-workout meal here, so don't worry about that. But uh, we got a couple interesting things I was going to show you guys. So I've got some kale, definitely going to be cooking that later on today. And oh yeah, and then this, I'm actually so excited about this. Uh, I saw this and it said pasta fermentata. And I was like, what? Is this fermented pasta? And then Crystal quickly pointed out that it says sourdough pasta. So they actually made, or pasta, however you pronounce it, they made pasta out of sourdough. I think that is like pretty awesome. And the shape of the pasta is so cool as well. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, look at that. It's gonna hold on to sauce like crazy. It's like a radiator or something. Anyways, I don't think I'm having this today, but I might cook it in like an upcoming uh, full day of eating and let you guys know how it is. I've already got some plans for dinner. Oh yeah, and we also found this. So this is kind of like a alternative to the just egg product. So I thought that was really neat. I always like, you know, trying these like new things out. So now I need to make that quick post-workout meal and it'll come as no surprise to you guys. I'm gonna be making a smoothie bowl. I'm gonna make this one beautiful. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so to get the thickest possible smoothie bowl, you gotta have frozen bananas. So we found these awesome like no spray, pesticide, herbicide free, wild blueberries the other day. Look how tiny they are. They're so cool. So many antioxidants in these wild blueberries. It's insane. Like eat so much more than even like regular store-bought blueberries. You wouldn't even believe it. Some flaxseed. So it's always good to have some type of fat with your meals. And you know, with this smoothie, I'm not really gonna like taste it. It's not gonna add too much to, you know, the meal as far as like, you know, flavor goes. So might as well just have the king of omega-3s, the flaxseed. A small handful of cilantro or coriander if you're in the UK. I know it probably seems like a weird flavor combination, but I really like it. But you can put any other green in if you want, like spinach is pretty neutral, right? I'm gonna throw a medjool date in there just to you know bump up the sweetness and the calories. And then a scoop of Vivo Life Perform. This is the salted maca caramel flavor. And then some creatine because I need all the gains I can get, especially with Crystal nipping at my heels, making all the gains these days. And then just a splash of water. I sometimes mess up here and I forget the thing I'm making a smoothie. I just like dump a bunch of water in and then you don't get a smoothie bowl. So just a little bit of water. Oh, it's not plugged 
broken. That's always a little nerve wracking. Like, no, is it finally broken? No, it's just not plugged in. And you guys saw I cut the tops off of the strawberries. I'm not gonna throw them away. Oh no, you don't wanna do that because there's lots of nutrition in here. Just hammer them back. And it's actually not that bad. But yeah, people are always surprised when I mention that I eat the tops of them and they're absolutely full of iron. As you can imagine, many dark leafy greens are. Lots of vitamin C. We know iron and vitamin C work together. So yeah, might as well eat the tops. Can't forget the granola. All right, so it's all ready. It looks beautiful. Now it's time to mess it up. <laughs> all right, let's get a bite here. Mmm. It's like you're eating ice cream. It's unbelievable. But ice cream with like flaxseed and cilantro and protein and tons of antioxidants and berries. All right, so I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy this, and I got some work to catch up on on the computer, so I'll do that at the same time, and then I will see you guys back in here in a little bit, and we'll make some lunch. It should be good, unless we get outside and do something, uh, you know, in the meantime, and think it would be interesting for you guys. I will bring you along. Mm. It does seem like a good day for a bike ride out there. It's pretty nice. Wow, they seem to really like this, or she does at least. So what do we have here? Silver vine. Silver vine. So apparently this is kind of like catnip, but a little bit different and they, they can chew on these things. <laughs> she likes it. All right, so back in the kitchen, I'm gonna make a really quick lunch because Crystal and I are gonna go out on our bikes as soon as I'm done this and digested. Uh, so I'm actually gonna make some soup and a sandwich for lunch. The soup is really simple. It's just gonna be this uh, like packaged soup. It's like a, what is it called? Super garden harvest vegetable soup. Uh, and then the sandwich that I'm gonna have it with is like a grilled avocado sandwich. And this one is so good. I absolutely love this recipe. And it's actually gonna be going in the next ebook that we're making. And I know this is like years behind, but I like dusted it off and I'm working at it again because I gotta get this out. And there's just way too many recipes sitting around not being shared with all of you. So uh, here's a little freebie, freebie from the upcoming ebook. And then you guys know they always skimp on the veggies with like the canned soups and stuff like that. So I'm just going to put in a handful of these frozen mixed veg. All right, so with a little imagination, this kind of takes the place of like a grilled cheese sandwich. So just be open minded. <laughs> so I like to start by giving the toast, nope, the bread, a really quick toast. And while that's toasting, we can just open up this avocado, see if we got a good one. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, and then you just want a really thin layer of miso paste on one side of the bread or toast now. It's kinda on its way to becoming toast. So you guys will know miso is like really salty, so you don't wanna overdo this, but I'm telling you, it's, it just adds to the whole finished product and it's so good. But like I said, like the thinnest layer that you can put on because otherwise it's too salty. And then the avocado. I like to make them fairly thick chunks because I mean, this is like the meat of the sandwich or the cheese or whatever. So you want this to be pretty substantial. And then on the other side, just some spicy brown mustard. Spread that around. And you can be pretty generous with the mustard. All right, and that's it. So now you just wanna close it up and grill it. Of course, if you wanted to, you could put like a little bit of like vegan uh, butter or margarine on the outside. Uh, I don't usually, but like, yeah, let's do it for this. So I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before, but this Miyoko's cultured vegan butter is out of this world. It's not a treat that I usually try and keep on hand because you guys know I like to, you know, try and keep it a little bit more whole than this, but sometimes these things are nice. So while that was all cooking, I just threw some greens on the plate. Also chopped up some purple cabbage as a little salad. Now I'm just adding a little bit of this 
uh, Dea ranch dressing. It's a little bit watered down as well because I find it a little bit thick right out of the bottle. All right, so it is already actually ended up being a much bigger plate of food than I predicted, but that's all right. I'll definitely get it all down. So the goal with this was to like kind of, you know, dial in the recipe, try it out again, and then take some photos for the recipe ebook because that's always like the hardest part. I have tons of recipes, but I always need to get good pictures for the recipe ebook. So hopefully I can get something good today out of this. Who knows? But I know I did get a good meal. That's for dang sure. So uh, let me take a bite of this. And I'll let you guys know how it is. Wow. Oh man, yeah, this is so good. I think you guys are gonna like this one. This is definitely one of those recipes where, you know, it is better than all of the things individually, or at least better than you think it's going to be. Like, trust me, I don't know what it is. When these all come together like this, just make some magic. And there's no way that this is gonna be a bad combination. Oh, wow. All right, so I'm gonna go and eat this, and I think I'm probably gonna give some of it to Crystal because there's no way I'm gonna be able to eat all this and then go for a bike ride soon after. So I'm gonna share this with Crystal, and then yeah, we're gonna get out there, go for a little bike ride, and uh, I'll probably bring you guys along. Then we'll come back in here and we'll make some dinner. All right, here we go, we're out here. Where are we going? I don't know. I know, I don't know either. <laughs> we're just out for a ride. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to see those little baby sheep or the goats. I don't know, should we head that way? Yeah, I'll that way. They're so cute. And then maybe after that we'll go through the water, take out the ocean. But first, through the forest. Yes. But there's some even smaller ones over here. We're gonna go find them. Oh, look at that one running. Oh my goodness. Oh, you never Hello. Oh, no, <laughs> look at him running. Oh, he's gonna be bad. Oh, he gets in his Bringing your babies over, are you showing them off a little bit? <laughs> that was kind of annoying. We didn't catch it, but these motorcycles drove by and they scared them all away and they were like all oh, right here at the fence. Alright, what'd you think of that, Crystal? Best. So cute, well, eh? It was good, and then those, you know, bikers. Yeah, no, the guys with the. scared them away, but it was really good. Yeah, it was. So now you know why I'm a little late for the gym some days. Because <laughs> yeah, no, this is, our gym is just like just down the road from here. And yeah, I've been stopping and just checking out how they're growing up. They're so cute. Alright, on with the ride. So we're just coming up on these beautiful cherry blossoms. And they're only like this for a little while, so I always like to try and include them in the vlog. Look at this, it looks like there's like marshmallows on the tree or something. It's so cool. All right, so we just got back from our bike ride and I feel like a snack. So I opened the fridge and I remembered that we had this amazing hummus and we have these chips as well. So I'm having some chips and hummus. So I'm having these veggie crisps, which are made of like chickpea flour, I think some like rice flour. I think they managed to get some Brussels sprouts in there and stuff too. Uh, they're really good and they're nice and light, perfect with hummus. So this hummus here we found kind of recently at Costco and it's like chip flavored and there's four different flavors and they have like dill pickle, barbecue, 
ketchup and salt and vinegar and they're all pretty good. <laughs> the dill pickle is especially good though. Definitely a fan favorite around here. And we also have these colorful cherry tomatoes. So I'm putting them in the bowl as well. And yeah, looking like a pretty nice snack. So I know I don't often show you guys snacks on this channel, but I often end up just like eating such big meals because I make such awesome meals that, uh, you know, I don't end up showing too many snacks. But yeah, here's a favorite of mine. Chips, hummus, some tomatoes. Definitely not reinventing anything here. So I'm gonna go sit down, eat this, and I will see you guys back in here in a bit. We'll make dinner. I've got such a good idea for a recipe for dinner. No. Come on. No. All right, so for dinner, I'm gonna be making some roasted garlic and miso, potatoes and tofu on top of a bed of sauteed garlic kale. So these are all pretty simple little recipes, but the nice thing about this is you can use, you know, any one of the recipes like on their own individually, or you could have this like all as a meal like this. So I think you guys are gonna get a lot out of this meal and I think you're really gonna like it because it's so delicious. These potatoes are absolutely fire and really simple as well. So I've already gone ahead and prepared a few things. I cleaned the potatoes and I chopped them into cubes just about like one to two inch sized cubes. And then I chopped some firm tofu into cubes as well. So now I'm just gonna make that quick miso and garlic sauce to put on these and then we'll throw these into the oven and then get onto the kale. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a splash of water, probably just about a quarter, maybe a third of a cup. And I'm using warm water just cause it kinda helps everything to like mix and kinda melts the miso paste, which is going in next. So just a couple spoonfuls of this miso paste. I know this is probably gonna be two tablespoons or so. Lots of garlic powder, like, I don't know, like two, like a tea, two teaspoons, let's say. And then a little less onion powder, some black pepper, and then just a splash of maple syrup. Of course, you don't have to have this part, just kind of helps to balance things out, but it's not necessary. So then you just kind of want to mix this up. And it does take a little bit to kind of get the miso all mixed in. Just kind of have to like work it around. I guess you could have, <laughs> I could have used a blender, I think, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So because I'm using this to cover both the tofu and the potatoes, I'm actually gonna add more miso. I usually only do the potatoes with this recipe, but I thought it'd be nice to throw the tofu in there as well and just bump up the protein of this meal. So you want it to be kind of thick, like, I guess like a paste. It <laughs> doesn't sound too appetizing, but it's kind of the consistency we're going for. So I have a silicone baking sheet on here. I know I mentioned it a lot, but they're really handy to have in the kitchen and they make potatoes cook up like really nicely. And the reason why I didn't just like mix it all together is because I'm not sure if the tofu is gonna cook first and I don't want, you know, to have to be like picking out the tofu if it's starting to burn before the, before the potatoes are cooked. So into the oven. And then I've got it on convection bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll probably be cooking this for about 30 minutes. And yeah, I know it's almost eight o'clock, a little bit late to be eating dinner, but that happens sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I have about 30 minutes until that's done cooking and the kale only takes about, you know, like five or seven minutes or so to saute, not very long. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm actually gonna make a dressing that's gonna go on top of the whole thing. And it is just like the classic Simnet Nutrition tahini dressing. <laughs> you just can't beat it. So, you know, why try and reinvent the wheel? All right, I'll walk you through it really quickly because I think it's important to know how to make your own dressings and sauces at home with stuff that you just like have on hand because that way you know everything that's going in there. I mean, we know the store-bought sauces have like a bunch of crap in them a lot of the time. Uh, they're often really expensive as well. And uh, you know, I think this is a really important part of the whole deal because everybody knows how to like throw together a healthy dish of like a bunch of veggies and beans and rice or whatever, but making it taste good is different. So I'm gonna start with a splash of warm water again. So an easy way to make sauce taste good is to hit the three main flavors. So we have sweet, which I'm using a bit of maple syrup. You could also use a date for that or, you know, think, think of other things probably too. Sugar. <laughs> And then salt, so something salty. Here I'm just using pink Himalayan sea salt, but of course you could use you know, seaweed, you could use uh, like tamari or uh, Bragg's liquid amino, something like that. And I don't usually make it in this order. I usually add the salt at the end because that way you can kind of like add a little bit as you go. But I don't know why in my head I always think like sweet, salty, tangy as the flavor. So the next one we're gonna add is 
tang, and that is gonna be some apple cider vinegar. I think that lemon would probably go better with this, you know, because of the tahini and the kale and all that, but this will work just fine. So if you have lemon, maybe replace this for lemon. So mustard is also a good way to add some tang to a dressing because it does have vinegar in there and it has like that little tangy kind of bite to it. But what the mustard does is it acts as an emulsifier and it helps the fats and the water to kind of all mix and stay mixed so it doesn't separate. And the fat that we're gonna be using, which is what often helps carry the flavors and gives the, you know, the dressings its body and all that sort of stuff, is tahini. And tahini's a little bitter, so adding the maple syrup as the sweetness kind of helps balance everything out anyways. So, I'm just gonna kind of <laughs> free ball this one. a lot but it's gonna be good and I always like to make a little extra because then you have some in the fridge for the leftovers the next day and then you just want to add some flavor so the old twin pillars of my cooking garlic powder and onion powder are always a good call in this one but of course you could add like some chili spice you could add you know curry powder if you want um, you could uh, you could go a whole bunch of directions with this all right now just mix it up Definitely super thin, so we know we can thicken it with a little tahini. Ooh, yeah, this is a good one. Here we go. Man, that is a mountain of kale, that's crazy. All right, so this sauteed kale couldn't be easier. I just uh, cleaned the kale really well. There's been so many of those little bugs, like the little aphids or whatever on the kale lately. Kind of gross, but I cleaned the heck out of it. And now just giving it a really rough chop. Man, it is actually just such nice kale. It's gonna be so good, it's so fresh. Then into the frying pan. And I'm just gonna add this freshly chopped garlic. This is probably like, I think it was like four cloves or something that I had, but it's really good in this, but maybe not if you don't like garlic. I feel like I could even have more probably. And I'm just gonna use a couple drops of this toasted sesame oil. This stuff is so flavorful and it goes a long way. So just be mindful of that, you don't need a lot. All right, so everything's pretty much done. Here's how the potatoes and the tofu turned out. They both cook perfectly, so you can definitely cook these at the same time. 425 degrees for 30 minutes, and I flipped them halfway. All right, let's build these bowls. <laughs> I honestly thought there was gonna be a lot more kale than this, but it's fine. All right, so I've got the bowls all put together. Obviously one of them is for Crystal, and I don't know about you guys, but my mouth is like watering. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. So many colors, flavors, textures, temperatures. Oh man, I'm so excited. So yeah, I'm gonna try and get a little kale, a little potato on this first bite. I mean, I know the tofu is gonna be good. Mmm. Okay, yeah, so those miso potatoes are so good. Uh, so I actually used yellow potatoes for those. So, you know, they're a little bit creamier than like a russet potato, but I mean, any potato would work for this. That like, you know, little miso dealy on top is just absolutely incredible. All right, let me try some of this tofu. With seasoned tofu, you just cannot go wrong. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned it, but I added some chopped tomatoes some green onion, and then also some sauerkraut on top. I always try and have sauerkraut at least once a day because we know that you know feeding our microbiome with healthy bacteria, like you get sauerkraut, is extremely important. All right, so I think that's probably it for this video. It's pretty late. I'm definitely not gonna be eating anything after this. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hit the like button if you did, if you got something out of it. 
Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the day. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them there. It might give me some ideas for future videos. And subscribe if you haven't already so you can see more of me. <laughs> and we can meet again. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me all day. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Like, it's still amazing to me that some people just want to, like, hang out and watch what I do and what I make and, and all this sort of stuff. So, ah, I love it. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. And I will see you soon with another video. You gotta see how Polly is laying. <laughs> Look at this. Are you comfy? Do you have a question? <laughs>